Hey everyone, welcome back to another Beast of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series reviews. Today we're taking a look at the Sinoceratops. I'm just plowing through these Wave 3 reviews. Just one more figure after this and we are all done with the Ceratopsian series. I'd like to thank my mom for getting me the Sinoceratops for Christmas. My parents have been great over the years. They've been supporting my dinosaur addiction ever since I was a little kid. They've been very supportive over it. So I'm still glad that my mom still feels comfortable buying her fully grown adult son dinosaur toys for Christmas. Now this figure retails for $89.99 and if you'd like to pick up this figure I'll leave a link down below in the description to Creative Beast Studios. So let's go over the packages super quick before we crack open this Sinoceratops. Sinoceratops is in full display with this beautiful window box. You have a sleeve right here with the Beast of the Mesozoic logo all decked out in foil trim. You have some beautiful artwork of the Sino on the front. And then turn the box over to the side. You get the Beast of the Mesozoic logo with the Triceratops done in white and then on the back of the box you have a checklist for all the wave three figures and also on the side of the sleeve you have more of that artwork with some facts about sinoceratops and the sleeve is removable and it gives you a nice picture of all the figures available in wave three so that will do it for the packaging let's crack the sinoceratops open and take a closer look so let's start with this 360 degree view of the sinoceratops Another great painted figure and a whole series of beautifully painted figures. I just love how all the paint apps came out on the head. A lot of nice color blending, washes and shading, just a lot of intricate detail. And then we get down to the body. The body has this very uh, camo look to it. That's because, just like most figures in the series, the color inspiration is taken from real life reptiles and amphibians. And the Sinoceratops is based off the Chinese crocodile lizard. Now the one issue I have with the paint scheme on the body, it just doesn't look as nicely blended as it does on the head it has like a very matte finish to it especially that orange on the shoulder and uh neck it just looks just the blending isn't really done that well I wish there was a wash over there instead of it just looking that flat and matte it just looks like someone just got you know a glob of that paint and just paint over it and just didn't really do any fine touches to it the rest of the paint apps on the body uh came out good just that section right there just it, my eyes always drawn to it and it just doesn't look right but it's just a minor critique on this great sculpted figure and you know another thing about Sinoceratops it's the only large ceratops known from Asia all the rest are known from North America so it's a pretty important species and now for a couple quick measurements this figure is 16 inches long from the tip of the snout to the tip of the tail and just about seven inches tall to the top of the frill so Sinoceratops in real life is estimated to be around 20 feet long so I'll put this figure somewhere in the 115 scale. So it's a little big for the 118 scale the line is going for, but I still think it works. And just like every figure in the series, you do get a collector card with the uh, artwork on the packaging. I have to say, I really like Raul Ramos's uh, artwork. I think it turned out the uh, best in the series. I always enjoy looking at it. And then turn the card around, you do get some facts about Sinoceratops. All right, let's zoom in and take a look at some of the finer details in this figure style, which is beautiful head sculpt. I just love how the head came out on this figure and just the paint apps are really sublime just a lot of washes and color blended on here all the colors just blend seamlessly into each other i just think it turned out absolutely fantastic looking and just love the long nose horn on here it's beautifully painted has a very natural look to it. it's done uh in a light gray with some nice dry brushing over it and the beak is also done in a dark gray with some nice dry brush and you can see the nostrils sculpted in right here you can see all those washes just make all the scale detail on the head pop i just love all the black highlights mixed in with that orange white and green just truly a beautiful beautifully painted head on this figure and then the eye is painted yellow with a black pupil you can see the uh bony projections on top of the eye socket are also nicely painted in a brown color they have a nice dry brushing on it they actually have a little bit of a gloss coat to give them that carotene sheath look and then let's just take a look at the frill from the front yeah the horn on mine came a little warped out of the packaging but you know after the review i'm gonna heat this up and uh straighten it out and that shouldn't be an issue but you know from the side it looks fine but from the front you can tell there's definitely some warpage going on on that nose horn but i love all that orange and white on the frill right here like i said all the colors just blend so nicely on that of this figure it's really really beautiful and then you can see on the frill all those 
uh, spikes line the frill are all nicely painted and they have a lot of nice dry brush on it to give that very very natural look and then opening the mouth up the mouth can open up pretty wide in the, on this figure and I just love that scissor like look of the jaws and then inside the mouth you can see it has that nice gloss coat to give it that wet look and you can see the articulated tongue right there you just stick your finger in there and you can move the tongue around and get it into different positions a nice little touch you know on some of the figures you really can't see the tongue it's pretty far back in there and there's a nice row of teeth on the upper and lower jaws and looking at the underside of that bottom jaw you can see more of those black stripes coming in and then going down to the neck you can see this camo paint scheme coming in you know right here is where i have the issue with the paint scheme on this figure i just wish this orange had like a a wash of brown over it to bring out all that scale detail just really detracts from the rest of the figure you can see you know the rest of it does have like a wash over it to bring all that scale detail just it's just really thick paint and obscures the scales and like i said it's just you know really draws my eye to it and just you know kind of degrades the figure a little bit in my eyes like i said it's just a minor minor complaint you can see some of the large scales on the shoulder are picked out in black paint Going down to the front legs, the front leg is mostly done in different shades of green. You do have some black markings mixed in with some brown and white markings. The toe claws are painted a glossy black color. And then going down to the main body, you got all that you know, camel paint scheme going on with a lot of white, brown, black, and a couple shades of green. Look at the figure from the top, you can see that large row of scales is painted in brown. It goes all the way down and it stops abruptly after the hips. I wish that this uh, brown paint continued along the tail because there are large scales sculpted right here it just you know we should just continue a little bit further it's almost uh the mattel syndrome where mattel doesn't like uh painting uh the tails of their figures i just kind of wish that brown paint continued down here i just don't like the way it abruptly stopped and then going down to the hind legs you can see all that nice camo paint you know this figure is doing a great john cena impression with all the camo you can't see me and then going down to the hind legs you can see the toe claws i picked on that glossy back uh, black paint and then turn the figure over on the other side you can see those brown markings coming in alongside the belly large a lot belly scales sculpted you some muscles around the front legs nicely nicely sculpted and then going down to the long tail you have all that brown white green and black mixing in and the tip of the tail is done in brown with a nice wash over it to bring all that scale detail so yeah all in all a nicely painted figure especially the head you know i have a couple of complaints about how the paint turned out on the body but it still is a great and beautiful figure nonetheless now for articulation we already covered the mouth but let's just do it one more time mouth can open up pretty far it's definitely one of the wider mouths on uh the larger figures and i like how it can close pretty much completely flush then you have a joint at the back of the head that allows for some side to side movement and then with this back neck joint right here you can get the head to look up pretty far uh for it to look down not so much some figures do it better than others it's just the way the head is sculpted you know this collar piece right here uh can hinder that downward movement and you can't get really too much downward movement with that joint but using both joints together in tandem you get some nice side to side movement going down to the front legs the arms can swing out you get about just under 90 degrees of bend at that elbow joint for the wrist joint you get some up and down movement and side to side you can extend that uh elbow joint to get the leg to stick straight out and then going down to the midsection you have a joint right here and you can angle it up to change the position of the hips and you also get some nice side to side movement with that joint and some rotation then going down to the hind legs you can get 360 degrees with that hind leg and then at the knee you do get some nice bend at the knee and then at the ankle joint you do get a couple clicks forwards and backwards in the hind feet some nice side to side and a little bit of up and down movement going down to the tail tail can go up can go down and you get some nice side to side movement like i say i always love the articulation on these figures some figures pull it off a little bit better it's just a way the head is sculpted I really like wish that you know the head could look a little bit further down but like i said just a minor complaint and let's move on with some comparisons first up here it is with one of the mattel human figures dr alan grant and let's do some tyrannosaurus here it is with the 
Papo Green Running Rex. And here it is with PNSO's Tarbosaurus. Kind of a shame that the Sinoceratops isn't getting a Tyrannosaur counterpart in the upcoming series to square off with. Been nice if we got, I'm probably going to say it wrong, uh, Zuchuan Tyrannus. Um, I think that, you know, it's estimated body size. If David did do that, the, you know, the Tarposaurus that's coming out in the line is, you know, based off like the Despleta size model. And it should be a little bit bigger, but it would have been cost effective to do like one separate mold just for that species. You know, he likes to get, you know, mileage out of these molds to keep the price down for us. But I think if they did Zuchuan uh, Tyrannus, uh, since it's roughly about the same size as an adult Tarposaurus, you could have squeezed two species out of it, but who knows, maybe in the future. Uh, we'll see something like that, but like it is going to be kind of sad that this sino is not going to be squaring off against a Tyrannosaur. And speaking of the Tyrannosaur series, I'm always doing this comparison. Here it is with the Kenner Red Rex, which will give you a you know good idea of how big the adult T-Rex figure is going to be when that comes out next year. And let's do a couple Sinoceratops figures from other companies. First up here it is with PNSOs. Um, there are a couple Sino figures out there. We got Namus, which is based off uh, Jurassic World. We got the uh, old resin one from uh, Fighte, but I think this uh, Beast of Mesozoic one is definitely the best representation out there. And speaking of the Lost World Sinoceratops, here it is with Mattel's version. And let's do some Beast of Mesozoic comparisons. Here it is with Wendy Ceratops and Medusa Ceratops. The two species are very closely related to Sinoceratops. And here it is with the amazing looking Pentaceratops and the, currently the smallest figure in the series, the Zuni Ceratops. And lastly, let's compare it to one of the big boys. Here it is with the adult Triceratops. And like I said, the, the adult Triceratops and Taurosaurus are absolute monsters of figures just to show you here's like the bulk between these two figures triceratops is absolutely massive like i said in the review in this thing i weighed it it weighs just about three pounds and it is a huge huge piece of plastic you just lost your horn there buddy so final thoughts on the sinoceratops another great figure in the series it's not my favorite you know i have a couple issues with how that like orange peachy paint came out on the shoulders i just think it looks really sloppy you just could have used a nice wash over there to bring out all that scale detail and how that the large scales on the uh, back painted in brown how you get right to the tail and it just stops should it continue along just a couple minor paint gripes on there but i think the figure is beautifully sculpted especially the head the head came out fantastic love how all the colors blend together those black markers are nice and crisp i think it's one of the nicest painted heads uh in the series but you know still a great addition to your collection it's probably the best representation of Sinoceratops out there right now. And as you can see, I have it displayed with the uh, cardboard uh, background that comes inside the box. It, this is a nice uh, photo of a geothermal pool. I love using these uh, backgrounds for photography. Yeah, it doesn't look that great on camera because my lights are uh, you know reflecting all over it. I take some pretty uh, neat pictures of them on Instagram. And if you wanna check out my Instagram, the link is down below in the description. And like I said at the beginning of the review, this figure retails for $89.99. You can order directly from Creative Beast Studios. Link to them is also down below in the description. And if you don't own any of these figures, you really owe yourself as a dinosaur collector to at least pick up one and see what they're all about. Articulated dinosaur figures are so much fun to mess around with. And, you know, I've done probably, what, like 26, 27 of these reviews of these figures on this channel and I just keep saying they're great they're just a ton of fun they're probably the dinosaur figures I handle the most because they're meant to be played with and posed around so that would do it for the review I only have one figure left in the series to do and that's the Xenoceratops and it's gonna be a little bittersweet when I finish that one up because it's gonna be all, you know quite a few months before we have anything new from Creative Beast still got the new PNSO figures coming in the Triceratops and Iguanodon who knows what else they have in store for us so be on the lookout for those upcoming reviews. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and is greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.